On July 8, 1930, Bethesda's first traffic signal was installed at the intersection of East West Highway, Wisconsin Avenue, and Old Georgetown Road, thanks to the Chamber of Commerce, which had conducted a 10-hour traffic count. Some things never change. Here it was, 1930. You know, we're talking about three dozen chamber members in this new chamber, and what are they doing? They're out on the street counting the cars on Wisconsin Avenue. When I became uh, president, I looked in the old news articles to see what the chamber did then, and I, in every article just about, the key problems in Bethesda were traffic and parking. The year I was president, the big, the, one of the big issues was parking. We had committees that worked with the county on uh, different items like uh, roads and streets and parking. The leading issues uh, in Bethesda at that time were parking, parking, and parking. Back in 1925, Bethesda was low rise and life was low key. The town had 20 businesses, including five coal yards and two feed stores. It also had something even more important, a prime location, just outside our nation's capital. One fall evening, newspaper man Thomas Everett asked some of these area merchants to join him at his wife's restaurant at 7123 Wisconsin Avenue to talk about forming a trade organization. April 1, 1926 marked the official start of the Bethesda Chamber of Commerce, with President Walter Tuckerman presiding. The Chamber's first project was to help organize the Bethesda Fire Department and raise $3,000 to fund it. I was raised in Washington. And as a member of the Boy Scouts, I remember very vividly taking the trolley at Wisconsin Avenue through Bethesda and out to the wilderness of Alta Vista, where we camped. One of the Chamber's early initiatives was its Buy in Bethesda campaign designed to lure shoppers away from downtown Washington. The Chamber also worked aggressively to attract new businesses to the area. They were truly a community, a small community of very committed individuals who wanted to, you might say they had a vision that their community could be more than just a few old railroad tracks and trolley tracks and they wanted to do something to attract more businesses and more customers. And what strikes me is that that's been repeated every decade. The role the Chamber played was that it was the only vehicle for the business community to have a, to have a voice. A lot of businesses uh, and business persons don't have the time themselves to become involved with the Park and Planning Commission of the County Council, so it was important for the Chamber uh, to fulfill that purpose. In 1939, chamber dues were a grand total of three dollars a year. I remember photographing the first parade. That was back in Galladay's time, when I first joined. The chamber was a good community partner in peacetime and in war. Well, I came here in 1946, and uh, right after World War II, and uh, I was advised to come here because there was only one printer left, and uh, I considered this Bethesda a small country town. In the 1950s, there was a significant infusion of energy and enthusiasm. When I came in as president, uh, it was the 25th year of the chamber, when we saw that the chamber was really not doing anything for the community, but just existing. Uh, a bunch of men got together and decided that we would take over the chamber. And we decided that we would vote the new officers in. And in, in the process of that, we got, we got the idea that we were the blind mice. Not the three blind mice, but a lot of blind mice. Oh, we're just a bunch of young whippersnappers, you know, who wants things to move faster. It was accepted by the older people very, very quickly. They liked the idea uh, to have people come in and do work. It started with Pat Patterson and Call of All Through. That group of presidents were the members of the Blind Mice, up to baby Bob Furman. This was a small town in the 1950s. 
wasn't uh, as big a community as we have today. And people knew each other, and they knew the businesses along Wisconsin Avenue, and they knew uh, the people that ran them. Much to the delight of the retailers, the Chamber instituted a program of holiday decorating along Wisconsin Avenue. In 1956, the Chamber formally changed its name to the Bethesda Chevy Chase Chamber of Commerce. Years later... My biggest frustration was to get everybody to say Bethesda Chevy Chase. <laughs> we saw it on a beautiful in the middle of Wisconsin Avenue, and in those days the Chamber was so well regarded that the people came down to meet us from, from Rockville. The Bethesda Hot Shops and Tasty Diner bustled with activity and quickly became favorite gathering places, whether discussing deals or meeting friends. Well, every year we had a field day at, at Kenwood Country Club, and uh, it was due to the largest of Mr. Chamberlain, I think, a lot of it, because the cost was only six bucks for the whole thing. And that includes your, your golf, your tennis, your golf cart, and uh, your, uh, your cocktail party, and a huge, beautiful dinner. But the guy that put this chamber on the map was Jim Barr. And uh, he, he was our executive director. And he came down here, went to work for the chamber for nothing for you. He said, I'll work for a year for nothing. And if I can't do any good, then I'll quit. By 1958, Jim Barr had grown the chamber to 500 members. Needless to say, Jim didn't quit. He stayed on as the chamber's executive director for over 12 salaried years. The first day that I moved into Bethesda, uh, we rented the uh, store next door to Lowen's Toy Store, which was on Wisconsin Avenue. And I went over and introduced myself to Al Lowen, and Al Lowen said, the first thing you have to do is join the Chamber of Commerce. And I said, well, why do I have to join the Chamber of Commerce? He said, because you have to put something back into the community. So I said, well, Al, I haven't had a chance to take anything out of the community. So he said, if you put, if you if you put back into the community, you won't have to worry about taking out, and that proved to be true. So the Chevy Chase business climate in the 70s, I think, was one of transition. Uh, Bethesda was changing from a sleepy bedroom community into a uh, metropolis, and uh, there was a lot of um, construction going on. At the same time, you had companies like Community Hardware selling birdseed on Wisconsin Avenue. The Chamber continued to make a difference throughout the community. The Hyatt Hotel had experienced uh, the death of a, a street person in the trash room at the Hyatt, and the Hyatt's employees became so incensed that anyone should freeze to death in a trash room uh, that they decided to give their uh, Christmas turkeys uh, to the poor. And out of combination with the chamber, the Goodwill Dinner arose, and uh, we started feeding uh, and inviting not only homeless, but uh, people who had no family and were disadvantaged. I have got the dubious distinction of playing Santa Claus. Uh, I kept telling him I didn't have the stomach for the job. If I had one word to describe the growth of uh, Bethesda Chevy Chase area in the 80s, I would say uh, more than one word. I'd have to say one word would be metro. As soon as the word uh, got out that uh, Bethesda may be rezoned and that the metro was coming, um, that attracted a lot of new players into the, into the chamber. Uh, zoning lawyers, uh, developers uh, really took over, uh, were the main player, became the main players in the chamber. Um, and I think that was a necessary step to prepare the business community to accept the changes that were ine inevitable with uh, the coming of Metro. There was a real uh, divisiveness between the residential community and the business community. One of my jobs was to go around and smooth over the feelings of people and try to explain to them. Once they understood what was happening, you know, and, and how it was going to benefit uh, all of us, that they were much more enlightened and I felt a lot better also. There were so many people that were interested in developing in Bethesda that Park and Planning um, instituted a whole new process which was nicknamed the beauty pageant for Bethesda. The developer had to provide a lot of different amenities um, in order to get extra density. Because of the strong competition, we had people bringing in ar architects and artists from different areas of the country to help uh, join the competition and, and make sure their, their project was going to be one of the best. They withheld development for several years there, and then when they approved these, 
They approved nine projects at one time and told them they all had to start within a two-year uh, time frame. When I was chamber president, the finances of the chamber were so desperate that we had to, to raise some money uh, to keep the organization afloat. The Forum Club was formed as an investment fund. Interest was earned from members' contributions, which added to revenue. I called upon all board members to volunteer their time to sit in the board office at least one day a month uh, to answer phones, to talk to walk-ins, to you know, just generally do what the staff does now. And uh, it was quite heartening because we had bank presidents and an executive vice president of, of Marriott and uh, I think Lockheed Martin. By the end of the 80s, the chamber was regarded as a financially stable organization. I think the chamber's biggest accomplishment in the 1990s was to assume a leadership role in the development and implementation of the county sector plan for the Bethesda Chevy Chase area, particularly the Bethesda Central Business District. The citizens and business representatives on the sector uh, plan committee were very aware of this proliferation of what we called alphabet soup. The Bethesda Evergreen, BEG. The Bethesda Advisory Group, BAG. All of these things we decided if it could be under one umbrella and the idea of privatizing the urban district in a nonprofit um, that would work on maintenance and beautification and promotion of the downtown and it's known as the Bethesda Urban Partnership. The buildings and the architecture and the streetscape and the enlivenment of our urban district are all a product of the Chamber's efforts working with the Planning Commission, the County Council, the County Executive in this process. The Real Foundation is strong leadership from committed people. I think the single most factor for the success of the Bethesda Chevy Chase Chamber of Commerce is the dedication and energy of its members, particularly its long-term members. When I was elected president, and I looked at this wall that the chamber has in their office, and you see all of the presidents over decades, and you think, I'm part of this, and I'm a link in this wonderful chain of leaders and energy and dedication, and if I could just be one link and pass it on, and then the links that are going to come after me, what an honor to be part of that chain. If you build upon what you've done in the past and you have a vision for the future uh, as to how you want to improve both services uh, and uh, the, the climate in, in this area, uh, then uh, you're going to be successful. Seventy-five years ago, the Chamber set out to improve the well-being of business and community life in Bethesda Chevy Chase. With each new Chamber President and Board, the legacy continues. <laughs>